So I'm Annabelle, um, otherwise known as Glockabelle, and um, I'm really excited to be here at the Toronto Film Festival because um, I participated in this film called Concerning the Bodyguard, um, which is directed by Kazar Farhani and is narrated by Salman Rushdie. Um, it's based on a satire by uh, Donald Bartholomew. And um, the director, Kazra Farhani, contacted me a few months ago about including my performance of Satis Nosia Number no. 1 in his film. And I'm um, going to perform it for you today on the Thimble Box. So now I'm going to play you a, another Dickdale song. You might recognize this from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm going to switch to the Casios. Is that cool? Okay. <laughs> um, so for a while, I just played, as I was saying, I just played classical piano. 
And then one of my neighbors had these. <laughs> I was living in Paris, and uh, I was uh, at the conservatory, and one of my neighbors had one. And as soon as I saw it, I knew that I had to get it. So I got it. <laughs> um, and then I also got this one. So this one uh, was made in 1982. This is a Casio Vialtone. It's monophonic. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> you can only play one note at a time. Um, and this one is polyphonic, but it's like fake polyphony. It's like only up to four notes. But it enables me to play chords. So here we go. Um, so, ooh, forgot something. Hang on. <laughs> This is very important. How's it going out there in the internet? <laughs> um, people are asking what your name is. So oh! That's a good sign. Um, Hello! <laughs> yeah, I'm Guacaba. Hello. <laughs> there are about a million hearts. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, so, this is not candy. I brought. Um, <laughs> I brought. A little something that I made in May. So it took me a while, but between the Glockenspiel and the Casios, I released my first EP in May. And um, in June, I took the EP on tour with the Go team, opening for them in Europe. And here's what it looks like. So it's not a Glockabell credit card. <laughs> Uh, it is a USB drive that you can just pop into your computer. And it has like the EP and the video and some photos and this tiger and an <laughs> anime version of me on it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so um, I'm going to play you a song from the EP. And this is called The Wolf at the Barbecue. It's about a wolf that goes to a barbecue with a head of cabbage, <laughs> and they have, um, they have a good time together until it gets ruined by some fleas. <laughs> <laughs> so why not? <laughs> anyway. No, no. If you had one of these, you might recognize this. <laughs> but I'll stop it. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's happening with this? The keyboard's like so excited to be here as well, it just doesn't know what to do with itself. <laughs> Alright, I think it needs a rock beat. But you'll see. This beat was also used in Da Da Da. I don't know how many of you know that by Trio. <coughs> Too slow. Okay. Alou, 
un chou, un loup à un barbecue. À un barbecue, un chou à un barbecue, un loup à un barbecue. Mon chou bien perdu, mon chou bien perdu, il sont rond et très très doux. Avec des poux, il sont rond et très très doux. Avec des poux. at the barbecue. <laughs> um, do you have any questions? <laughs> do you want to hear another one? Um, My Cassio playing didn't sound like that in the eighth grade. <laughs> it, took, it took a little while to like adapt. I mean, it took like a lot of practice, almost like just as, as long as it took me to practice. No, not as long, but like to be a classical, you know, pianist, I had to work at like playing tiny buttons. like. They're just buttons. <laughs> and somehow, like, after all these shows that I've done, I still think that, like, the harder I press them, I'll, it will sound louder. <laughs> but it's just buttons, so it doesn't. <laughs> you never, you never so are, do others play the glockenspiel with thimbles? Is this I don't thing? believe so. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. So, I mean, that's such an incredibly intricate um, way of approaching the instrument. Uh, has it gotten, like, have you had conversations with people who play more traditional, like with, uh, with sticks, and have you kind of talked to them about it? Are yeah. They at you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the most part, people are like, oh, that was like, that's a good idea. Like, great. Thank you for coming up with that. <laughs> um, the, other, the other week, I was at this festival up in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and I was performing this classical piece that was written for my thimbles on the Glock. I think it's the first like, classical piece written for the thimble glockenspiel technique. Anyway, so I go backstage after the performance, and, um, and I meet this percussionist who says to me, I didn't see what you were doing, but I was really curious. How are you getting that sound? And I said, I can't tell you my secret. I might have to kill you. <laughs> and he said, maybe that was intense. But he was like, no, no, tell me. Like, you know, there is, a, I don't know, the, the, um, there is some like Percussion Society of America. I mean, I'm sure there is. Anyway, the Percussion <laughs> Society of America is having a solo glockenspiel contest. And he's like, it's like a solo glockenspiel composition contest. And maybe I should write a piece for your symbols and glockenspiel. And I'm like, here's my card. You should do it. <laughs> wow. That's, I don't know. That's just an unlikely story. Right? <laughs> very, un very unlikely. Anyway, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's funny. Like when I started doing the, the symbol thing, um, I was playing in this band in France. And at the time, the band director said to me, yeah, well, that's cute, but like, don't do it in my band. <laughs> and then <laughs> a few months later, like, I kept doing it, and I met the fire furnaces who were in Paris. And they were like, oh, we think this is great. You should come on tour with us. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the right answer. So, yeah, I guess, you know, sometimes you just got to stick with uh, what, you, what you think is a good idea. <laughs> Really good idea. If, if it, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. So, do you prefer to play those over the piano? You said as if you're a classical pianist. Um, well, what's great is that these just fit in my backpack. You know, <laughs> you can have a concert anywhere, and being just a you know as a classical pianist, you're just confined to having a grand piano wherever you're going to go and perform or an upright. I mean, it's just it's not it's not very conducive to playing anywhere. I mean, this I could play in the subway. I could play really wherever. Um, but these are really fun to play, and they just also remind me. Whoops! They also <laughs> remind me of my childhood, I guess. Um, and somebody said to me once they remind them of the life aquatic. <laughs> like I'm like this Steve Zissou here right behind my keyboards. I don't know what they meant. Um, yeah. So I don't know. They're really fun to play, but I still have a piano and I still play classical piano too. 
Yeah. Um, do you guys want to hear one classical piece? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the tricky thing, um, the tricky thing when I first started adapting classical songs to these and even to the guac is just how many octaves do I have and how can I arrange it? So not every piece can be arranged, um, but this is a Bach minuet, the Beethoven, an excerpt of the Beethoven Moonlight Sonata, and then a prelude from the Old Tempered Clavier as one, but fast. Ha, 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 ha. 